We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Ted. Ted has applied lots of our advice as he continues to upgrade and tune his system. He's now running dual power sound audio 15V subs, and he's measuring his bass response using Room EQ Wizard and the calibrated U Mic 1 from Cross Spectrum Labs. Go Herb. For <laughs> Ted, he's found that le- uh, learning to use the uh, Room EQ Wizard and taking measurements to be a pleasure, so he's happy we pointed him down that path. Remember when we did it, we are like, uh, if anybody's going to like doing it, it's going to be Ted, but seriously, <laughs> yep. Ted, your wife might not like how much test tones you start listening to <laughs> Anyways, his before measurements showed a big peak around 45 hertz and a big dip around 60 hertz and after a lot of experimentation with subwoofer position and eqing he's able to largely correct those issues and he settled on a gentle rise in the bass response however up in the 120 to 150 range there's a dip that remained no matter what how can he fix that now we have some pictures well, it's some graphs, and these graphs. are taken from Room EQ Wizard, so you can see it. He wanted to point out, he did look at the waterfall graphs as well, which show the decay of the sound over time. Mm-hmm. And if you're uh, uh, watching the YouTube video, you can see that in the before measurements, that peak that he's got in that 45 hertz range, well, the the things that kind of look like mountains in the graph, they come all the way to the front of the screen, and they're still not dissipated. Whereas once he had repositioned them and EQ'd them now. He didn't touch anything in the time domain, right? He just repositioned his subs and EQ'd them, and you can see that that is dramatically cut down. So that's what we were talking about before. In the bass, if you fix one, you sort of automatically fix the other. If you fix the frequency response, you automatically fix the time domain, and vice versa. If he had completely padded this room like crazy so it's nearly anechoic, uh, and that would have fixed the time domain, that would have automatically fixed the frequency response as well. So there's that nice, uh, you know... uh, relationship between the two fix one fix the other but uh yeah he's got this issue up at 120 150 hertz that's there before and after and it's a little bit more complex because your speakers are playing in that range too right and looking at the labels now these are his labels on these graphs so i'm not 100 percent sure but it seems as though that's only a measurement of his subwoofers right so one thing to realize is that up around 120 to 150 hertz they should be quieter anyway Right. Because they're already within the crossover region. Yeah. Uh, up at 160 hertz, they should be 24 decibels quieter than they are at 80 hertz. That's what your crossover is supposed to do. That's what the low pass filter is doing. However, what he's showing in the graphs looks a little bit more egregious than this being down 24 dB in that range. And it's happening a little bit lower as well. So I don't know you which have... graph you're looking at. Are you looking at the blue one or well, any at the of green them. one? Any, any of them. You can see that there's a dip, uh, you know, sort of halfway between 100 hertz and 200 hertz yeah 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 so in in any of them it's always consistently there so it seems like okay that's just part of the response of your subwoofers now keep in mind about 24 decibels of that should be there anyway but then you have this extra dip that's going on now the thing is your speakers are also very much playing in that frequency range yeah you're not yeah. yeah When you look at a graph like this and you're only playing your subs, you mm-hmm. should be looking up to a, wherever your crossover is going to be. In your case, it's probably 80 hertz. And a little bit higher as well. Yeah, a little bit. But anything above that, like I'm not looking at this graph anywhere above 100 hertz, really. Maybe maybe 120 at the max. But I'm not looking at anything higher than that because that's not the response. Your speakers are starting to play at that point. And if you don't mm-hmm. have the speakers on, then you have no idea what was really happening in your room not at those frequencies. So if you want this to be a graph that you can really read and understand, like all the stuff below, yes, absolutely, 80 hertz and 60 hertz and below, that's what you, you, you want to see. And it looks really good. You know? Oh, yeah, hugely the 80 improved. Hertz, hugely, hugely improved. improved. Over you the still have a suck out there response. around 60 hertz, which is actually pretty common. Oh, you yes. Know, that is sort of a you know a room thing that happens in a lot of rooms and it's not that bad you've got the the gentle rise as you go down that is that is also entirely valid Uh, um that's exactly what like uh anthem would recommend it's what it's what most acousticians would recommend because that's what we're expecting to hear is is a rise in the bass so this looks really good to me so what Mm -hmm. you need to do is rerun this with your speakers playing too Mm -hmm. so that you can see what above 100 120 hertz actually looks like one speaker at a time 
Yeah. And since since this is Ted and he won't mind, because he's going to be like me, right? He doesn't mind doing this one speaker at a time. going to be time consuming, but we know Ted's okay with that. The ideal, the absolute ideal, is that no matter which speaker you play, it is this nice, even response that blends right into that subwoofer response. And so from, you know, since you have this rise in the bass that's that's intentional, that's one thing, but it's more or less a flat line from, let's say, you know, 60 hertz on up. Um, when one speaker is combined with the subwoofers, any one speaker is combined. That means no matter what you play out of whatever channel you play it from, you're going to have very accurate response. If you know what this what means, right? He's going to buy new. He's going to buy new more speakers because <laughs> his surrounds aren't going to hold up. To I know, I know. Something something's something's going to have a a, a dip or a hump or something yeah. that he can't get rid of. It's inevitable. He, it's inevitable. And uh, he only upgraded his front three speakers, right? He's still using older speakers that's from the right. backs. Yep. So those rears, that's not going to, he's not going to, that's, I'm, Ted's that's wife. What I, the, I the am theoretical sorry. Idea, ideal, Ted, the theoretical ideal. Don't get too hung up on it. I'm so sorry, Ted's wife. I'm so sorry for what we have done to you. We are trying. <laughs> we keep trying to make him not spend money. It's not working. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's what you want to do. Want your question answered? Send it to question at avrant.com. is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.